here's what's coming up on the Cold Popcast. You know, I used to like playing with Legos and stuff. My like grandpa, and my dad, like he would always say like, you know, oh, you're gonna be a little engineer. And I didn't even know what an engineer was, but like when people would ask me, what do you want to be when you grow up? I'd say, I want to be an engineer, mm-hmm. and, you know? And it was just because like, well, seems like me going into that thing would make them happy. Mm-hmm. So I'm gonna try to do that thing. You know, then I found out what being an engineer was. I'm like, well, this is hard as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds terrible, Grandpa. Why would you set me up? Yeah, like, you didn't tell me. Any, you didn't tell me what it was. Like, what the hell? What's popping, everybody? Welcome back to the Cold Podcast. I'm Zo, and I'm Steve. And today we're going to talk about the idea of parental expectations and whether or not uh, it's a good or a bad thing to kind of live your life uh, either trying to make your parents proud or any type of guardian figure in your life. Like, should you follow the uh, guidelines they lay out for you or should you mostly strive to just be your own person? So I find that a lot of the time people that are choosing to actually, you know, go for what their parents expect from them, they miss out on a lot of opportunities that would otherwise allow them to explore their own person more intimately. Uh, I don't think that it's a bad thing to listen to your parents. Like, you know, I'm a Christian, so, you know, the Bible says you should honor your father and mother. Mm -hmm. But I do think that in honoring them, you can also go out on your own path in order to create a lifestyle that suits you, not a lifestyle that would have suited your parents if they were you. Yeah, um, I think I would agree. Um, You should definitely always try to strive to find, um, uh, you know, your own person, your own path. Um, I don't I would want to ask you the question, like, do you think it's necessarily a bad thing uh, for someone to like, you know, I guess uh, try to make their have have uh, making their parents proud and expectation? Or you think that mindset should be like uh, completely devoured from a person's uh, actions and how they approach life? I feel like it's a slippery slope in terms of making your parents proud. Because if you are living your life to make your parents proud, then you're eventually going to get to a point where you don't have the time, I guess, to live your own life. Mm -hmm. I think that your parents being proud should be a consequence of you living the life that you want to live. Okay. Yeah. Um, I I mean, generally, I agree with that, honestly. Um, I know, like, I guess I have my own personal take on it. Um, I don't think there's necessarily anything wrong, you know, like I said, with wanting to make your parents proud, especially if you had a positive relationship with your family, um, to where it's like, okay, I... You know, I understand that the things they tell me um, are things that are, you know, basically in my best interest, what they believe to be in my best interest. You know, if you have a good relationship with your parents, I don't think they will want to lead you down the wrong uh, path. Um, But kind of what Steve said, I think there should be an aspect of wanting to understand, like, what do you want to do in life first? Um, And then try to abide by the codes of your parents, um, you know, teachings, rather than just verbatim trying to live the life that they would you know vicariously want to live through you? I mm-hmm. think that could be a lot of uh, be a problem that a lot of people feel like they're being pushed in certain avenues or directions because it's like it's not their you know it's not the career they want it's the career that their parents would have wanted. Right. It's not the wife you want. It's the wife your parents like would like yeah. you to have. Yeah. It's the it's the girl next door that my mom always said was nice even though she looked like you know Rocky <laughs> Dennis. <laughs> <laughs> She's cute, isn't she? <laughs> What's a reasonable metric for for ultimately? making your parents proud Mm. i think a reasonable metric a lot of the time is like complete and utter obedience to what they expect (laughs) (laughs) that's like what i think that that's like the ultimate that's like the ultimate of what they would (laughs) listen no matter what yeah Yeah, because like when you have a kid and maybe it'll change when i have a kid like i'll probably want my kid to do what i say and like you know follow my orders and you know be like me as much as they can but information but at the same time it's like You know, I also want my kid to be free to experience life in the same way that I have. But I don't want them to be so free that they make too many mistakes uh, and they lead them in in the wrong path. Like, they can make mistakes, obviously, but I don't want them to go down a route where they end up being, like, you know, a hooker. (laughs) In in that case, if your daughter became a hooker, would you lose uh, pride in being her father? Absolutely. (laughs) (laughs) yeah like a hundred percent yeah i'd be like man something went wrong i did a bad thing my wife did a bad thing and the kid is doing a bad thing it's like okay well clearly i'm a failure what if she's making a lot of money doing it though that sounds bad (laughs) she's mentally healthy has like a guru (laughs) Like, <laughs> she has a guru and she's mentally <laughs> healthy. Yeah. yeah no, this doesn't pimp. sound. But by guru, is that like, is that like so slang for paid. pimp now? Yeah. <laughs> no, no. It, it, it's, it's another word for therapist that rich people use. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. It's a guru. A coach. Is it, a yeah, yeah. A life coach that oh, like, yeah, yeah. gets paid like a whole salary off. Always off lights, off. incense, teaches her yoga. You know, I don't know. Yeah. like a dark studio and helps her a little too close with the spotting. Yeah. 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 I, don't, I don't know. You <laughs> lost me when you said. <laughs> 
<laughs> Isn't that what a therapist is? You, you lost me when you said mentally healthy and hooker in the same thing. Yeah. So, I don't know. Let's let's go back. Let's go back to topic here. Because, <laughs> no, I don't want my, like, okay. I feel like. You I, got, I got that you'd lose pride in her yeah. existence. That's terrible. No, not in her existence. I'm not like, <laughs> I wish I, I didn't say I would wish I never had a daughter. What I would be saying is just, like, the pride clearly there's a failure here and I need to figure out how to save my daughter you're from this life of prostitution. It. You know, like I would have to, you know, readjust, recalculate, and, and move in a different direction. But do you think at that point you'd f- like? Do you think you'd be able to say I'm still proud of her? No. <laughs> <laughs> Why would I be proud of her? She's I not, have no she's, reason. She's, she's only sucking dick. She's not on heroin. <laughs> <laughs> well, she's probably doing both at that point. But you know, yeah. <laughs> just, I'm just saying, theoretically speaking. Right. I don't want to wish this on my daughter anymore. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, this is a, a hypothetical girl. conversation, man. That's you got to be able to go down the road of the parent. Right. No, I get it. And I would not I would not be proud of my daughter if she no, became okay, a prostitute. I'm hearing that now. Yeah. I, I get it. Yeah. <laughs> like, how many times do I have to say it? I'm like, just I mean, so taken like, back. I'm just like, this poor so girl. So you would be proud of your daughter if she was a prostitute? She's alive. I don't know. This is not something to be proud of. <laughs> like, <laughs> this is my daughter, Lizzie. <laughs> <laughs> Lizzie, have some class. Yeah, have some class. Crass <laughs> son of a. This is like I'm proud that she's alive, sort of feeling. Right. No, but, I'd be but happy if, that if she's that, alive. Yeah, it's not. It's not proud. It's happy. I'd be it's just happy content. she's alive. I'd You're be just like, content. That good she's thing alive. she's still alive. But we got to yeah. get her. To but I'm rehab. not proud of what she is. Yeah. Got to get her to hooker rehab. All right, I'm, I'm trying to get my <laughs> head around this. You know. Yeah. So. I, I get it. That, you can't. You can't have both. <laughs> <laughs> I think if I can remember what your like your original question was like, is there like any like how would that like the expectations apply? Um, I think I think to some extent because I could easily just say like, oh, I only care about you know their happiness. Like that's as far as my expectation. As long as you're happy, but that'd be a lie to be honest. Like at least for me <laughs> because uh, <yeah. laughs> because I know for a fact that if my daughter came home and said that she started stripping. You know, and that she's using a fake ID because she's only seventeen. Oof. I'd be really upset. Like well, I couldn't lie about what that. What are you doing wrong at that point? She's uh, she's seventeen. You're 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 taking care of her. Yeah. Or if like you know, my son ended up in jail, and you know, it's like there are things that I don't want them to have to go through, or right. just like career it's hardships. Yeah, or career things that I don't want them to actually choose because I kind of believe like. It's a slippery slope. You know, same thing with like, you know, drugs. They took up smoking and said, Well, dad, this is who I am. This is what I like to do. Like I wouldn't I wouldn't be able to be like, Well, son, you know, you'd be the best damn smoker you could be. I I couldn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's let's, let's be a really proud father. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's 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 switch a route. Let's swap it back to us being the kids because none of us have any children. Okay. Right? So let's go let's go back to the from the point of perspective of like or do we? you know, make <laughs> the, I might I have one in Thailand somewhere. I don't know. You keep oh, making that joke, but that's becoming <laughs> all too real, Steve. That's actually yeah. hilarious. Yeah. Um, Little Steven with a PH. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, I, I I just feel like if you want to have a life where you're in control, you can't give that control to other people. But then at the same time, it's like you you do owe your – would you say that you owe your parents a, like a debt of gratitude in the sense that now you have to sort of do what they say? Uh, to an extent, at least, because they raised you, because they invested so much in you, and because they're such a big part of your life. Um, to be honest, I think to an extent, I do believe that. Maybe not like I feel like I owe it. Um, will I say that? That's like not like it's question. like a like a pact. Like now I now like I have to pay this off like a debt. But I feel like I have a responsibility to my parents. You know, especially if I feel like they gave me a good upbringing and they set me up on a path to do pretty well. You know, and that and to meet certain like um. Uh, milestones like you know it, achieve independence to where it's like you know I could be you know uh, able to be self sufficient without their support like that's something you know maybe have a level of stability uh, you know not you know get any like you know really strong vices or hang ups that start like deteriorating my life like those things I feel like to some extent you you know I feel like I, I, if they don't expect that of me I'd be doing them a disservice if, if that did happen you know that makes sense. Would you like, um, for example, like would you avoid a cert- like certain situations or avoid certain things because it's like, ooh, if this goes south, then my parents are going to be like pretty upset with me. Like, you know, is that like, are you, are you like, because like for me, I don't have that muscle, I mm. guess. <laughs> like for me, it's like when it comes to things that I know um, may not work out mm-hmm. or may go in a bad direction mm-hmm. or, you know, may like 
you know, inevitably be like something that my dad hates, my mom hates. It's like I don't necessarily calculate like, oh, well, if I do this and it goes wrong, then my parents will be upset. So I'm just not going to even try. Yeah, you know? actually. Uh, yeah, I actually do have that. And I acknowledge that's not always a good thing mm-hmm. because um, I feel like definitely um, from my own personal experience, I've always like I felt like I came from a pretty decent family. My parents kind of like worked hard to put me in a position. So I felt like I had a responsibility or have a responsibility to kind of make them proud. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that almost like translates sometimes into me either doing things not because I want to, but because I know like it will probably make them a lot happier if I, you know, pursued this or did this. And I think that oftentimes takes away from my own agency to be like, well, wait, what do I want to do? Because mm-hmm. I did find myself kind of hung up on that for a while growing up where it's like, I don't even know if I really know what I want to do. Um, if I had one example, I remember um, growing up as a kid, um, you know, I used to like playing with Legos and stuff. My like grandpa, and my dad, like he would always say like, you know, oh, you're going to be a little engineer. And I didn't even know what an engineer was, but like when people would ask me, what do you want to be when you grow up? I'd say, I want to be an engineer, mm-hmm. you know? And it was just because like, well, it seems like me going into that thing would make them happy. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to try to do that thing. You know, then I found out what being an engineer was. I'm like, well, this is hard as hell. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds <laughs> terrible, Grandpa. Why would you set me up? Yeah, yeah, like you didn't tell me. You didn't even tell me what it was. Like, what the hell? Yeah, Grandpa doesn't even know what an engineer does. <laughs> yeah. He's just like, oh, you, you look at those blocks. Yeah, You're really good blocks. with those. You know, it, it's kind of like when old people say, like, you know, they, they tell you, like, they want you to stick to education. They say, you know, you really get your nose in them books. I hate that. Yeah, so and it's much. like we don't even use books anymore. But you just say that, like, <laughs> or like the expectation to finish school. Um, because a lot of times, like your parents or grandparents, um, especially in minority communities, don't have never went to college, and I think they tend to have like a warped conception about what it can do for you. Right. You know, so it's like they always just like preach it, but don't really like know what to do with it afterwards, or can't really like leverage any understanding about like, okay, so what can this do for you? Because I've had like you know I've seen it where it's like a parent would be like you know finish school, the kid finishes school, doesn't get a good job. They're like, why don't you have a good job yet? And he's like, it's hard. He's like. What do you mean it's hard? You got a degree. And then it's right. like, well, do you know what a degree can do for you? It's like, no, but you should. That's why I sent you to school. <laughs> you know, it's like, that is my, it's their fault. Yeah, the expectations are set based on, like, the wrong parameters almost. Like, the parents don't even know what the hell college is supposed to do. Right. They're just like, well, everyone else is going to college, so my kid's going to college. And mm-hmm. after they go to college, they're going to have a good job because that's just how we do it here. Right? Exactly. That leads me to, like, asking... <laughs> Like, what, 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 what is more important in, in your parents' eyes, you think? Do you think it's it, it's that path that you walk or is it the results? You know, is it the mm. is, is it what you get to? I know depending on the parent, it's usually like uh, their investment paying off. Mm. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I think money. that's usually like a lot of the time. <laughs> Not necessarily the money, but like their investment in you, their time, their money, their their yeah, attention, love. Mm-hmm. their love, all those things being fruitful. Like they want you to be fruitful and they want that to occur at the lowest level of risk possible, it feels like. <laughs> a little investment. Yeah. Yeah. That's little the, investment yeah, my little investment. Yeah, my mean, little investment. My little investment. 100%. I think that you're spot on with that. I think yeah. parents, in some way, they view their kids as an investment. So what if you become super rich and then move away? Yeah, see, that's the thing. They're like, I expect you to come super rich and take care of me. Yeah, that's the thing. So what if there's like a, hey, mom, I'm, you know, I'm out here, you know, I'm taking over the world, you know, I'm I doing be, the thing, but well, I won't be able to personally come back home next year. Personally, it's like one of my goals in life is to be able to retire my dad, like to be able to like get enough money to get him in a position where he can live, that's a good goal, you know, independently without need for any form of work. Like he's gonna retire on his own soon. He has a pension and a four hundred one k and all those things. But I want to retire him to the point where he doesn't feel like he needs to be busy all the time. Because mm-hmm. even in retirement, I already know for sure my dad will continue working. Yeah, yeah, yeah there's no d- way he won't. Your dad likes to work. Yeah, he likes working, but I want him to feel like because he likes to work because he likes the fact that working can either save him money or make him money. He likes, he likes to see the, the results. Yeah, he, he likes really does. like the result is like part of it is money, but then there's also like oh well, I built something, I created something. Yeah. Uh, but there's also like a significant money aspect. <laughs> like we were I mean, having he's a very com- frugally smart. Yeah. Yeah, but I think being that's the thing. Like, so my dad would want me to be more frugal, and it would probably make him proud if I was a lot cheaper. Like mm-hmm. sometimes he says like, "What happened to the old Steve? You used to be so cheap." Mm-hmm. And like he oh, like he likes that. Steve now. Yeah. Yeah, but now I'm like you know I will spend the money as I need to spend the money because spending the money usually often increases. Uh, the uh, equity in my lifestyle, sort mm-hmm. of like so. Like for example, like I just bought a new camera for the business. I didn't think about it. Like, well, you know, I can just wait to buy that camera. It's like, you know, if I don't buy it now, then you know, maybe I'll be able to get it at a better deal later. It's like, well, no, I looked for a good deal, so I was frugal about it, but I wasn't cheap about it. 
I wasn't like, well, I'm going to get a cheaper camera. It's like, I want to have three of the same camera. I don't want to get a cheaper camera. Mm-hmm. So there was a little bit of compromise there. Um, but my dad would have liked it probably more if I was like, well, I'm going to put this money into a savings account, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, so it's like, how much of myself, how much of my own goals am I willing to compromise in order to make my parents proud? Not much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not much, personally. Yeah. Um, but, yeah. It, um, kind of to go off that, because I always thought about, um, like, how we talked about earlier, like, what is the expectation? Do you think it's just a lifestyle, or do you think they want to, like, dictate your path in life? Um, and I... I know, like, my uh, parents at the end of the day, and, you know, my dad stuff tells me, like, you know, it's just about just being happy and stuff like that, um, you know, just kind of finding what you want to do and just, you know, I think the most, the pretty much the best thing I can do to make them proud is just to live a, a, a life that's, like, you know, objectively, like, successful or just, like, you know, one where it's, like, you know, baseline success, not like a millionaire, but, like, you can support yourself, you have a, I know one thing that will make them happy is me having a family, having kids. You know, giving them kids so they can have grandkids to take care of. And, you know, just not, you know, being, I guess, at need for anything, not having any, like, serious debilitations, uh, not being in jail, stuff like that. Like, mm-hmm. I think the, the pretty much their only expectation for me at this point is just to, like I said, just live a, a healthy life. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do have goals, like I said, because um, there is that kind of desire to where it's like, you know, I feel like I was given – they made – I know they've made sacrifices for me. And so I know I have a goal to where it's like to some level I want to be able to, you know – give back to them in some way um that's meaningful like i've i've i know like what my mom and dad's dream car is i'm like maybe if i ever get the chance i want to buy them that or at the very least be able to like you know move them out of like um you know the town they live in and move them somewhere nicer Mm -hmm. you know those are like the kind of goals i have that i want to be able to at least say i can do that for them right in return um but i think i guess my main takeaway um is a, a good parent, I think, only dictates like wanting their children to live a good life, but they don't go as far as try to, to try to live uh, their kids' life for them. Yeah, I think when your advice goes towards like, um, you need to be like a computer programmer, or like I want you to, t- or maybe those family situations I can't understand. Like you need to take over the family business. I think that's when it becomes destructive and leaves your kid in like a weird space, uh, to where you know they can't really d- like live their own life. Yeah, like uh, when you funny. get that Eastern culture. I'm in the yeah. opposite realm of that. Mm. I I am finally convincing my family to start a business. Oh, nice. Mm. I, I I'm just trying. Like I've been for years, for years, just trying to like. I'm actively defying, you know, my <laughs> mom and my dad's like understanding of what it is to be successful because mm. I, you know, I didn't go to college, I didn't, I didn't, you know, stay focused in a sales representative representative job for years, you know. Mm-hmm. I still have like a vision that they <laughs> they don't understand fully to this day. <laughs> um, but now my mom's like starting to get it, and it, it's pretty great because like, I can tell like. I don't know. I wasn't necessarily making them proud this entire time. Mm. I just wasn't. Ma- I wasn't disappointing them either. Right. Was, they were just but, like, you know, he's doing good. But mm-hmm. middle ground. Now it's like, look, you're wrong. <laughs> you're about to be really proud. Right. You can, you can <laughs> sort of like, uh, like I know it's your family, but you can kind of like big dick them. You know. Like, you know, I'm trying to big league them a bit. You know, I'm not, I'm yeah. not saying I'm not. You know, I'm not trying to necessarily, but it's happening, and uh, we're all gonna win in the end. Yeah. No, like I've that. actually had the same experience with my dad, where it was like. Now my dad, you know, casually talks to me like, you know, one day we'll be working together. Like mm-hmm. one day it's like, you know, when I retire, yeah. we'll be running the business together or he'll be doing something or maybe he'll be like, you know, on my staff. And there's just like all these different opportunities that he never would have thought of before if I didn't go out there and fail and make him not proud and, you know, you know, go through a lot of experiences that he never would have went through. Mm-hmm. Like by no means would he ever have put himself in some of the situations that I put myself in. But because I went through those situations, now I'm in a position to give back to him. Yeah. So it's like if you take more risk in terms of um, what you're willing to do, like Hiram, I feel like you can actually speak to this example as well to an extent where you put yourself out there in a way that your family members may have never done. And you yeah. learned a lot of lessons that they won't learn. So now you're in that position to tell them like, hey, this is a version of success that could ultimately be more successful than you ever imagined. Yeah. You know, I feel like I've poked into different just different understandings, uh, just different, just different things to look at. Essentially, I, like, I brought them things that they were just like not aware of, and mm-hmm. like that's all it is. Yeah, mm-hmm. they were just they were basing their their metric of success on you know what they've been raised on, and and that's ultimately what parents are going to do. They're going to guide you based off of how they've been raised, and and, and the cycle continues. But 
why not break the cycle and make everyone proud? Yeah, including yourself. Yeah, like if you stay in line, so I love it. Go, go oh, some? yeah, I was just gonna hop off because I'm glad you said that. Uh, where it's like they're basing their perception of of living their life based off how they were raised, and I think a lot of parents don't realize that. <laughs> Um, if you're being a good parent, what you're doing is like a lot of times you're putting your kids in environments that you perceive as being better than what you had and exposing them to like more avenues and options than you would have had. Um, therefore, you know, by default, expanding their understanding or like putting them in a realm that is outside what you've ever experienced. And I think a lot of parents will sometimes be very linear in how they think and not realize it. Yeah. So it's like. Um, parents, there's like, you know, families that have grown up where it's like, they've only worked jobs, you know, they've never had the thought of starting a career. Um, they've never, um, they don't have any exposure to like the new careers and avenues that there are in jobs. So it's like, if you had an old school guy that only worked at a factory and here, this son is like, you know, like learning how to do AI. He doesn't know anything about that. He doesn't know like the success rate, what that would be, what kind of jobs exist there. Um, if, if anything, it's terrifying to even think about. Cause yeah. like, it's like, oh, that's right. They almost took my job. You yeah, know, like, like, they almost <laughs> lost their house. What are you talking about, kid? Yeah. It's like hearing like, your nah, son. Dad, got- they can make his houses now. <laughs> like my son goes to school for animation. I don't know anything about it. I'm like, what can you do with that? You know, so yeah. it's kind of like um, they don't you have to understand. Well, they have to learn to understand that, like, um, if you have a linear view of life, you can't always assume that, like, you have the ultimate, you, you know, you're, you can sometimes box your kids in with your ideology. You right. know, at the end of the day, and Truly. you should strive not to do that, which is why you got to loosen your understanding or at least have an understanding enough to realize as long as they're happy and that they're not doing anything that and is healthy. Object- healthy and not objectively destructive, you know, they might know a little bit more about what they're doing than, you know, you might know. Because, like I said, they're living in a world that you didn't grow up in. Um, and like I said, they're living a life you didn't experience. So. I think that's uh, I think it's very important for like like say for anyone like looking to have a family, raise kids, or have raised kids. Um, that's like a perspective you need to take to account. Right, I love that. Yeah, that's and good. and sometimes you end up having experiences that they've never even like considered that they could have, mm-hmm. and then like through their lens, it's like you know here's an example right from a conversation I had with my dad recently. He was saying to me, um, and we talked about this on the phone earlier, I think. Um, Basically, my dad was t- trying to convince me to get a job so I could, like, you know, pay more bills and, you know, have a little more money for the b- to, like, invest in my business. Mm-hmm. But uh, fortunately, the business is going <laughs> relatively good right now, and I'm actually able to grow it. I'm able to run some advertisements, so things are going well. He can see that it's going to work out in the future, but he was saying to me, like, you need to get a job at, like, Amazon picking up boxes and being a warehouse guy. Mm-hmm. Now, I was like a backup or is like a main? He was saying, like... So keep doing the business and do that Currency. at the same time. Okay. Yeah. But the issue cash is, the, the, yeah, to have more cash flow, to have more income, able to be able to support it. We were talking about this last week. Yeah. Were we? Yeah, yeah we were talking oh, yeah, about we were. just the importance of, of, or I guess the possibilities and like just the avenues of like, is like what, what is the worth in having a job and actually working towards a dream or just going full head in? Mm-hmm. It seems like mm-hmm. your dad was on the end of like, you need to have he was, cash flow. He was more like, you need to have a job and then your dream can take a back seat. And they can take even longer because of that. And I was trying to tell him, like, That's you know, the idea of basically taking something that has the potential to make way more money, provide way more freedom, way more opportunities, and then put it in the back seat uh, to work in a warehouse. It's like I wouldn't. I'm not against having a job. Mm-hmm. I would have a job, but he back used the phrase. Is like, I don't know. He used the phrase, "A job is a job," and it's like I don't feel that way. I see a job as an opportunity to expand your skill set, to maybe get paid, to uh, spend your time. Because either way, if you're spending eight hours somewhere, you know whatever they pay you isn't going to be enough. You have to be getting something else out of it. Yeah. See, like when when, I, when you said Amazon, I wasn't thinking like you're just getting a check. I was thinking like, okay, you're getting like like inventory stock, like evaluation. You're getting like team team leadership skills, like. Like everything that would come with it, ideally. I don't think so. That's, I don't not at not working at an I, Amazon I'm, warehouse. I've never worked there, so like I couldn't tell you this. <laughs> I mean, I'm optimistic about oh, like, my you, workplace. I can tell you know Steve I mean? views as like very low common denominator of like work person. Like yeah, like, it's just like oh, we do just stock boxes. Hey, I used what to do it. Do you have? I used to do it. I used right. to have a job. I, like d- that. I, 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 I used to bend steel. <laughs> I did it for three years, and it was like you know I'm not learning anything. I'm being wasted. No, that's what I felt like <laughs> when I was bending steel. I was just bending steel. Yeah. It's like, this is nothing. Yeah, your body is being <laughs> wasted in exchange for money. Yeah, They're taking yeah. your body 100%. and cutting pieces off of it 
So they, <laughs> <laughs> they're chopping you into little pieces and selling you in that shit, man. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. I, I get it if you see there's no value that you can learn from it. That makes sense. Yeah. You yeah. Know? I, I could lose weight, though. That's the only thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> little I, core. <laughs> I think I think there's like I don't know because this and I argued this last week um, where I think there's like other little intrinsic values you get from having a job. I think the one point I argued before is like sometimes it just builds discipline, which you can apply to other aspects in your life. You know, getting up, you know, basically forcing yourself to have to get up and do something that you don't want to do, On but you know time. you have to do. You know, that could apply to other aspects of your life. Um, you know, just build general work ethic. Um, you know, if you feel you have those things, and you know, by all means, like stick on your path. But I think I think. Uh, Kind of the thing he was probably trying to say is there are some things that you have to do, not because I guess it has like intrinsic value in terms of like it's going to make me a better person, but it's like it's it's just going to be you you have to because, you you know, it's going to aid in your survival. Like I said, you, it's, it's, it's that necessary suffering. Yeah, exactly. Because it's like the I think the most important thing about the basic job your dad is probably trying to bring up is like, well, you know, imagine if you were on your own, you were going to need to make money. This is probably the most convenient you know, thing you can do to just make the money to live. And then you can do your dream. It's not like ideal. And preferably, if you can like cut that out completely, you'd have yeah. more time to your dream. But I think in it, the aspect of reality is that a lot of times we, we don't have the time to just do that. I think we're afforded that in modern day society, but a lot of life is just maintenance and survival. But mm-hmm. I think I think I, I get what you're saying. Like, okay, what if I was alone? And my dad brings that up all the time. Like, what right. if I was on my own? Mm-hmm. But hey, yeah. here's the thing, right? If I was on my own, I wouldn't live in the same lifestyle that he would actually want. I wouldn't actually follow. I wouldn't pursue it in a way that he would, mm-hmm. right? If I was on my own, right? If my dad wasn't around to help support me or whatever, if I wasn't able to live in his house, okay, right? I would just have roommates. Yeah, I'd be paying probably like probably like pay, paying like four or five hundred dollars a month on on a room somewhere. Mm-hmm. I would be making money doing the writing stuff online that I do, and then I'll be running the business. I would figure out how to make the dream the priority because if I don't do that, then I'm not gonna make it, right? You have to do that, or otherwise the dream dies. Like imagine working a fucking ten hour shift at a warehouse and then coming home. Or not coming home, coming here to do a podcast. Like I, I wouldn't be able to put it all together. Like mm-hmm. and maybe that's discounting mm-hmm. myself, but it's like I know myself to an extent where it's like, if I was forced to do anything beyond something that I want to do mm-hmm. <laughs> for a long period of time for a full day, I wouldn't be able to operate at the level that I need to operate in order to build the business and to build this podcast either. So I just know that about myself. So if that's an example of like what a metric of success would be for like your father, an instance, um, independence would be the metric probably for him. Independence. Yeah, that would be. He'd be like, "Oh, I'm proud of my son because now he's independent." But the thing is, when I was at my peak of independence, yeah. I wasn't happy. Right? I was. So, doing so the all idea types of stuff. is change the perception of their metric mm. and simply make them conform. <laughs> Which is very hard to do for older people. It's very difficult, right? But they will conform. They will actually like shift. Like my dad is gradually shifting. He, it's true. I've, you know, we've seen yeah. it. Yeah, yeah he's, he's actually he's, he's actually, like interested in like you know when when you bring up business. Now he's excited. He's like, well, when are you gonna get rich? Like, when you, <laughs> like huh. when do when are you gonna hire me, son? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. Like that that's a beautiful dream. I think I I always think like, oh man, I'm gonna hire my dumbest child. And he's going to drive huh. me around and stuff. Because <laughs> I'm just like, I'm going to be so successful. That's like where I just set my imagination yeah. of success. It's just like I'm going to have a huge property. And my my like least successful child is just going like, to like chill with me. Yeah. But if I had like, they were like all just operating on companies that like could potentially staff me, I'd be so proud. Yeah. I would mm-hmm. be incredibly proud. Yeah. True. All right. Well, anyone else got some thoughts on this one? Uh, Lizzie, you got anything? I know you've been working well, the soundboard. Yeah, I mean it's it's such an interesting thing because it all just really depends on where you live. Like Asian culture is very, um, very different, wildly different from our. You have Western to save face. Yeah. yeah, you really rely on pretty much entirely listening to your parents. Like your parents are your elders. You respect those elders. Hispanic culture. If someone calls it's your name, it, you don't say hello or you don't say what. You say demand, command me. Really? Mm. Yeah. Wow. Like it's Never like translated that. to commend me. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, See, this culture is <laughs> very I love you. massive. Command me. <laughs> <laughs> commend me. It's that's such it. a big part of this. My lead. Like, yeah. the, the, wow. Like that's our Western view. <laughs> that's interesting. Oh, yeah. Uh I guess I'll just end off by saying uh once again, um I think uh pretty much the 
I'm like, I can't remember what the original title was. Actually. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, well, well Lizzie, were, were, were you done? Yeah, were you done, Lizzie? Were you done? Effectively. I just okay. wanted to mention, like, Asian culture is just so different. It's like, you, you really don't even get a choice. Right. You have to live according to this hierarchy that determines your pathway. Yeah. You're going to go to school. Set in stone. You're going to study. And they have nets around their schools. And when they get old, <laughs> you're, the one thing you ultimately got to do is be able to take care of them to the end. Yeah, yeah. That, that part too. So That that part's a huge well, part. We have, it might seem like something, you know, like people old are making crazy decisions, but it's very different. We might be all taking it for granted. So yeah. just reevaluate mm-hmm. and think about what you really want to do out here. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. You can't just forget about your parents. No, yeah, you also no. don't have to obey them like to the end of the earth or disobey yeah. them directly. Yeah, I say shoot. You find, know. find your line, find your path. Yeah. <laughs> see, if, see if it meets with them. Yeah. yeah, if you love your parents, you know, uh, seek to make them happy in the ways you can. But uh, like I say, don't end up, you know, losing yourself in that race and you know realize you weren't ever ever really living your life. You were living theirs. I think that's that's the only line you kind of kind of toe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, guys, thanks for watching this episode of uh, The Cold Popcast. You can actually follow us on all social media platforms at The Cold Popcast. That is Instagram, social, uh, TikTok, Facebook, uh, and whatever else, Twitter, or X, as they call it now. Uh, you can also find the podcast on audio platforms as well as video platforms, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts. Uh, rest in peace, Google Podcast. It's not. It's dying soon. Oh, no. Uh, Patreon, $5 a month. You get all the exclusive content from The Cold Popcast. Uh, including the My Black Friends podcast, which has over 80 episodes, all hilarious. Uh, Thanks for popping in, everybody. We got to pop out of here. Peace.